So I have been a Plex user for 20 years. It's been a very long time. I've bought a lifetime subscription and I've been using it basically ever since. And I've been mostly a happy customer throughout those years. I, I have many good experiences with Plex when it comes to streaming TVs, TV shows, and movies. Music, not so much, but I don't blame that on Plex simply because I'm just a horrible music library manager. I, I can't do it very well, and we'll talk more about that later. But the point is that, for the most part, Plex has been good to me. But Plex is also kind of garbage, and it has been getting more and more garbage over the course of the last few years. They keep shoving... There's no better word to describe it other than shit into their UI and stuff. And while you can remove some of it, some of the other stuff you can't, and they constantly push these updates to their UI where just things move around and it just drives me constantly bonkers. Now, I've put up with it for a long time simply because I bought the Lifetime Pass. I have to use it for a lifetime, or at least, you know, that's what I thought I had to do. But I am officially done with Plex. Now, I, I know that I just posted a video about a... a tracker for Plex. That video was recorded ages and ages ago, and I still believe Tautuli is a very good application, but it's time for me to move on. And I'm moving to Jellyfin, which is like the only other good option out there. And today I want to talk about some of the reasons why I'm doing so, some of the things that I'm worried about in my transition and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and jump in, but before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at my Jellyfin, shall we? Because I have this thing all set up, or at least kind of, and it's actually pretty good. So the first thing that I want to talk about is just this UI. So this is not the UI that you would get if you just installed Jellyfin. You can get this very easily because th there are people out there who have spent their time and effort creating themes for Jellyfin. And I adore these people. Like seriously, this is just such a good thing to do. I know that a theme for Jellyfin isn't a productivity wonder or whatever, but it's just so good that people have done this. And there are tons of really, really good themes out there, and they're phenomenally easy to install. You just copy one line, put it in your settings panel, and bam, you get something that looks like this or something else. It's so good. So the first thing, reason why I'm switching, or at least one of the first reasons why I'm switching, I should say, it's not the most important reason, but the reason I noticed first, is the customizability of their web client. It's so, so damn good. And if you wanted to create your own theme, you could do so. It's not that hard from what I've seen. So overall, customizability is very, very good. You can actually also change this homepage. You can kind of do that with Plex, but things tend to move around in there for whatever reason. So the fact that I can just customize this however I want, I can make things bigger, smaller, all that stuff. It's really, really good. So customizability is like top of the list and it's so much better than Plex simply because there's nothing here that's not mine. All of this stuff belongs to me. I've got it from various sources over the years. I can play it. It's never going to get pulled around, pulled off from here. Also, it's nothing else is ever going to be added to this. Like, there's going to be no random shows from Plex that just kind of pop up in my feed for whatever reason that I ha that I can watch for free, but with ads. And like, who do? Why would? Why on earth would I want ads in a service that I host? So it took me a while to get there, but I'm there. So the customizability of this and the inability of, you know, third parties to put shit in the UI is one of the reasons why I'm switching. Another one is that there are better third party clients, just bar none. So Plex Amp for Plex is actually pretty good. I, I, I can't say too much bad about it, but it's the only one. I, I, the only good one, I should say. It's the only one you really should be using, and that's only music, right? So if you want to watch movies, you either have to come to the web UI, use their crappy app on Android or iOS, or use their like Electron application on Linux, which nobody really wants to do. So Jellyfin differs from that in that there are a ton of third-party clients out there. So the one that I use on Android is called Symphonium. It is music only, but it's phenomenally customizable. Looks fantastic. I'll try to put a screenshot up here somewhere. It just looks really, really good, and I love the damn thing to death. It's like just the, the best thing since sliced bread. And that's just like one of them. There's like 12 more on the Play Store. I know for a fact there's at least four or five really good ones on iOS. So 
And that's not even counting the Jellyfin applications themselves. So Jellyfin does make a third, uh, their own application for Android and iOS. It's not that great simply because it feels kind of like a web application, or at least it did the last time I tried it. So uh, you don't really need to use that though because there are excellent third-party clients. Now I have not done a good job of searching for clients on Linux yet, but I'm assuming that there are some out there and I'm, I'm really excited to see if there's a like a terminal-based music player for Jellyfin. That'd be phenomenal. Like Plex doesn't ha really have one and I really miss NC Spot. So if I'm able to play my music from the terminal from my Jellyfin library, that'd be great. Obviously I have the music stored somewhere where I can access it. So I could use something like MPD or CMUS or a Q or something, but I'd much rather have the play data go through Jellyfin so I can kind of keep track of that. So there's that. Now, for those of you who watch my Tautuli video, you will you will wonder probably what happened to my stat tracking stuff. I actually did install Jellystat. So I have Jellystat here, which is the Tautuli, you know, kind of alternative for, for Jellyfin. It works really well, was really easy to set up, and I'll continue to track all of my stuff through here. So that's there. there there's that. Another thing, and you guys kind of probably have sussed this out during this video so far, is that Plex has just kind of sucked for the last few years. They keep shoving stuff in there, as I said. They keep changing the UI. And despite despite the fact that it doesn't really affect me because I have the lifetime pass, they keep raising prices on everybody else. So I feel like it's only a matter of time before the lifetime pass just kind of goes away and is no longer lifetime. It just... I mean, they're a corporation. They're going to be corporations about things, you know, and, and that means doing things to make more money. And a lifetime pass does not bring any any more money for them. So eventually, I have ever expectation that the lifetime pass will go away. It won't actually be considered a lifetime pass anymore. Or they'll start offering features outside of it in order to entice people to sign up for a subscription, whatever it happens to be. And I don't want to have any, any part of that. I, I self-host, Plex. I don't need you to shove shit into my UI. Tell me I need to pay more for it later on. I have no interest in that stuff. So Plex just sucks. So really, as I, you know, have kind of said over and over in this video already, that's probably the biggest reason why I'm switching away. The next one isn't really that big of a consideration because obviously I've used Plex for so long, but the Jellyfin is free and open source. So it has that going for it. I, I always strive to use open source software when I can, but I don't have a problem with pro proprietary software. But given the fact that this is FOSS, it will make me feel a little bit better, so there's that. And the last thing is this, there's some plugins that you can go around to, to find. So there, there are actually plugins that you can find. So if you go to the catalog down here, you can see that there's a few plugins that you can get. A lot of them have to do with gathering metadata and stuff like that, which is great. You can also do quite a bit, few things like gathering logs and so much more. So I will also say that this is not an extensive list. There are things out there beyond here. So like, for example, in order to scrabble to last FM, which is something that I still do or have started doing, I should say, starting started again doing, you have to have a plugin and that's not available in the, in the catalog here. You can go up here to the repositories and you can actually add a repository and that will allow you to add other plugins. So people have gone through and created plugins that aren't in the catalog. You can go and actually find those things, which means you can extend Jellyfin basically however you want. So that's really cool as well. So those are the, the reasons why I'm switching and the things that I found find really good. So let's talk about some of the things that I'm really worried about. So if I actually go to my music here, now, first off, don't judge me by the music. A lot of this stuff is just extraneous stuff that I've collected over the years. Um, a lot of it's actually, I think, really good. But as you can see, it's kind of a mess. Now, if, especially if I go here to albums, albums really showcases this off like right on the first page. There are some things like, for example, this album here, those two are exactly the same album. They have the exact same metadata. What's different is for whatever reason, my dumbass has them stored in separate places. So I have them stored here. And then there's apparently this one here is in a separate folder. So it doesn't combine those things. So I have to go into my uh, directory structure of my library and make all those changes. My biggest problem with Jellyfin isn't necessarily a Jellyfin problem because I had the exact same problem with Plex is that my library is a mess. It's, it's, it's a horrendous mess. Now, one of the cool things about Jellyfin is that I could say, click on this and click identify, type in the artist name, the year that I know that the, art, the album came out, and it would actually find that album and fill out a lot of the metadata for me. I am a little cautious about this simply because it's not necessarily metadata that is 100% accurate. I'm not sure how much I can trust it. So I've been very cautious about using that, but it's a cool feature to have. And I've noticed that 
the metadata saving is persistent. So if I were to have to reinstall Jellyfin on, on say like a new hard drive or something like that, I would be able to bring all of my changes along with it, at least theoretically. So that is nice as well. So I don't have to worry about having to do this all over again. I'm not super impressed with this ability to actually change some of the metadata for whatever reason that you change it and it just relies on the folder structure so you have to go change the folder structure before the metadata will actually take effect so in order for these two things to actually be combined I had to put them in the same folder before it would recognize it's just one album I'd like to be able to change the metadata on one of them you know to whatever it needs to be so that they just combine themselves like they should be another thing that I really have a problem with and this is just again across things this happened in Plex 2 is all like, for example, this one here. I, first of all, I don't even know who this is. I know who Serge Tankian is, but I don't know who uh, this is or who this is. But because they're listed as artists somewhere along the line on some extraneous album that Serge Tankian put out, I have them as artists in my list of artists here. And that's... <laughs> That's not something I really want. And that happens over and over again. So, for example, if I go down here to, say, for example, Breaking Benjamin, one of my favorite bands of all time. I have two of those for whatever reason. I had, like, three or four of them for a little... Actually, I still have... They're actually still here. So, I have this one here, which is, I believe, is the main one. Yeah, that's the main one. That's, like, all of their albums. Uh, but the other album, which they did a lot of collaborations on, so they have, like, this one here, which features this guy. And then they have this one here, which features this person. And they have this one here, which features... The, you know this person and, and, and it's, that's that's all just one album and because of the way that you know I have the metadata and whatever it's all a mess so my biggest hurdle for you actually using this for music is that metadata I've talked about that problem before it's what kept me from using Plex as my main me music streaming service I'm gonna have the exact same problem with Jellyfin as I had there and it's gonna require a ton of fucking effort in order to actually get this working so what I'm my plan here is to create playlists so I don't ever have to see the artists or albums page very much I can just put the I can recreate the playlists that I have in Deezer and Apple Music and Spotify or whatever and just stick with those for a little while until I can go through and, and make sure that the rest of this stuff is cleaned up. And I plan on doing that slowly, but as again, it's going to take a long time. So that's the biggest thing that I have a, a problem with. And the last one really isn't that big a problem. It's just that I haven't really got it to work yet, and that's transcoding. I haven't actually had that big of a deal this time with it. The last time I tried, when I played a... a, a TV show or a movie or something like that, it would take forever to actually start. But this one here seems to be almost instantaneous, and I have no transcoding on this whatsoever, so that's great. Now, granted, the last time I tried Jellyfin, it was in a, do in a, a Docker container in a VM. So that's probably the reason why I was having problems. This time it's on bare metal with GPU uh, access to a GPU. It's not really set up to use it yet, but it's still there. So eventually I can set up the transcoding stuff. So I'm, I'm a little worried about setting that up simply because I've never done it before, but I think it won't be that big of a deal once I get NVIDIA drivers installed, which is, uh, you know, such as it is. So Overall, I've had a really good time of setting this up over the course of the last couple of days. I've struggled with the metadata stuff because I've been trying. I, I wanted Jellyfin to kind of be like the miracle pill because it's connected to Music Brains and being able to edit the metadata with Music Brains is basically how Beats does it, how it's how JetBrains Picard does it. So I'm basically getting access to all the same metadata, but it doesn't help if the folder structure is trash. The thing is, is like if actually, if I, I believe if I show you. I have my folder structure here that you guys can actually see. So it's actually, when it comes to the, the artists, it's not that bad. So here in the center column here, you can see I have the artists fairly well done. For whatever reason, the extraneous stuff inside of these folders, though, causes all the issues. So, for example, we saw that Breaking Benjamin one. I have Breaking Benjamin right here. And all the Breaking Benjamin stuff is in the same directory. And yet, when I get to this Aurora one here, because it has featuring certain artists, I end up with a, a ton of different things in the artist listing page, which I don't care for all that much. I don't think that there's a good way to get rid of that or have it stop doing that. Maybe I'm wrong, but that does bother me quite a bit. I do, for whatever reason, have two Auroras here for whatever reason. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if those are exactly the same or if they're different. I'm going to have to do that. And that's a lot. I have that in a lot of a lot of places here. Like, I think the, the worst one here that I have actually is probably Nickelback. I remember Nickelback being exceptionally, you know, horrible when it comes to 
files. Yeah, and I have a whole bunch of stuff there. There's, there's a whole bunch of live ones in there, which means there's a whole bunch of duplicates for songs and stuff. And also, yes, I like Nickelback. Get over it. I think they're a good band. Whatever. You know, it, I'm a late 90s, early 2000s, you know, high school student. So Nickelback was really big back then. And I'm, you know, whatever. So anyways, uh, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on this whole thing, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put out for all of my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of this microphone chatting for about 15 or 20 minutes or so and just random about random stuff. So if that's the kind of thing that interests you, support me on Patreon and YouTube. That stuff comes out about once every week, week and a half or so. And it's just, you know, good stuff if you're interested in it so there's that you can also support me by going to this my store which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org there you'll find awesome hats like this one here which i actually you know probably should have been wearing but i don't actually didn't actually put it on so there you go i have hats t-shirts all sorts of stuff there you can get that again at shop.thelinuxcast.org thanks to everybody who does support me on patreon and you at patreon and youtube you guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 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 very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody watching. So I really do appreciate all those who watch my videos. YouTube's doing this whole thing where it's kind of like not giving people views for whatever reason. It's not just me. I thought they were just punishing Linux guys because all I heard was it from Brody. Uh, but I, I saw several other people. I saw Linus Text Tips talking about it, that how their views have gone way down. I don't know why YouTube has decided that they don't want people watching videos anymore. Or maybe they're sending them somewhere else or whatever. I don't know. So um, I appreciate if you're watching this video, you've watched all the way to the end. I appreciate you. Thank you so very much. I'll see you guys later. See you on the next one.